What's up, YouTube? JBC, LOL here. And today is a very special day because it's my birthday. Yeah! I'm 22 this today. And since I got some free time, I'd like to share with you my top 10 games of 2013. I know I'm nine days late, but I had no free time to make a video, so I'm, I'm going to make it now. So, let me just uh, show you some games that I bought that I didn't get to beat yet or I haven't played enough to consider it my top 10 game. Got Tearaway from one I play is pretty good. Got Injustice for the PS4. Only played a little bit. It's just like more combat but a lighter version. Saints Row 4. Pretty fun so far. And, you know, goofier version of uh, Grand Theft Auto. The Splinter Cell Blacklist is still sealed, as you can see. Got that on sale at Target. And Dragon's Crown. I still haven't beat this. I really have a chance to beat it because it's it's more fun playing with multiplayer. And, you know, I don't really have people over that much, so. I'm waiting to play. You know, I have probably play a long time with one of my friends or family member. And. There's some honorable mentions before I get to the top 10. They couldn't just, they just couldn't get to the top 10. We got Death Space 3. It's it's a fun game, not compared to the other two. And it, what the biggest problem I had is like, it was drawn out way too long. Like, I just got, kept on getting bored with the same enemies over and over again. Like, they should have ended way before the climax. But it was pretty good. The ending was pretty good. Then we have Resident Evil at Revelations. This is the kind of Resident Evil we need, not like 6 or 5. Resident Evil Revelations brought back Resident Evil the right way. Hopefully they learn from this. But, um, I don't know. It's just, just couldn't make, I didn't, I don't know, I like these games more than this, but this is a very good game, you should get it. For any device. Got some Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance. Uh... It's a good game. Nice hack and slash. Best part is where you go. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Like blade mode. You just slash them in any way. way. That's like the best part of the game. But the story was kind of lit up. And everything else. And it's the, more, the thing I hate about the most of the game about this game. It was really short. If it was a little longer. I probably wouldn't have made my top 10. But too short. And the story was kind of eh. And no snake sadly. <laughs> Had sunny though. Uh, I hate to see this when they start milking franchises. Unnecessary prequel, God of War, Search Engine. Good game, great graphics, a great everything, but unnecessary, kind of boring story. Kratos' story is probably is already over. You don't really need anything else. Maybe continue on to after the third one, but no prequels. You don't need a prequel. And... Um, before I get to top 10, right quick, some dishonorable mentions. Got uh, Beyond Two Souls and Knack. Beyond Two Souls, I was pretty excited for because I loved Harry Rain back in the day. It was just, I think what killed it for me was it was just the same person through the whole entire game. And oh yeah, it was not like just straight on, straight story. It uh, like the flashbacks and it jumped around, it was kind of confusing and it wasn't like you know really coherent for me, and I wasn't really know what was going on, and it just didn't do it for me. Like some parts were like really good with the homeless people and the when you go to the uh, overseas to the, I think I believe Africa, that's that was a good part. But some parts like where where he have she's having dinner with the boy, and uh, uh, when she went go over the party with the kids is just. It's unbelievable to me. A lot of people are people are really aggressive to women, women. Like they try to rape her multiple times. Like rape her, freaking. I will let you play it, but it's it's still pretty good. Not as good as the other games. Knack is pretty disappointing for a, a PS4 release, a launch game. It was just too simple. Like in the characters, like. I agree with some people saying like they shouldn't have did like how Rash and Clank or Jack and Dexter have like you know hot, lighthearted, fun characters with personality. 
these characters just had no personality. Snack was a a a, a black dude with very white voice. I don't I don't understand that, but sorry, right. not worth sixty dollars. Uh, finally, we get to my top ten. It was very hard. It was easy, like first five, but the uh, five through ten was pretty hard. I decided to put Killer is that very very unique game. Very, it was fun uh, combat, but you know with two to fifty one games, you get a uh, style versus substance. The gameplay is very shallow, but it's still fun. It's fun shack and slash, a little shooting. And the story, I don't know what's going on, but sometimes it's just better to not know what's going on, just have fun with the game. And but it's, the art style is what uh, makes this game. It's like very unique. I really never seen it except for like Killer uh, Killer Seven, but this is a little different, a little darker. And you know, pretty good. And uh, Jiggle scenes, eh, it's kind of weird, but what? I don't know. I want to get into it. <laughs> Killzone Mercenary. This is the only Vita game. Wow, I was blown away. I just beat this not too long ago, like a couple of days ago. I was blown away by the quality of the graphics on just a, a handheld device. I didn't think it was possible. Because this looks like a PS3 game. Like, it's similar to look into Killzone 2, maybe Killzone 3, but wow, this is like, it's, and it's really good too. It's the only problem is it's really short, and the characters, eh. Uh, but. I believe it has a better story than Killzone 3, maybe, no, not 2, though. But it's it's pretty good, it's, it's an alright story for a Killzone game, but it's still good. If you have a Vita, you definitely need to pick up this. It's the best handheld shooter, first person shooter, probably ever. Then, I know, I know, another Killzone game, but this is a good, very, very good game. Probably the best looking game I've ever seen on console. And... The story is weak, also, but the characters, the main characters, uh, I don't even remember his name. I think his name is Kelly, Kellen, whatever. But the gameplay is very, very fun. It and they made a change to this, like the kills, the other kill zones is just corridor shooters, like boom, this wave after wave of enemies, not really, you know, any other tactics are just going on, just full blaze. But this one, you can go different ways. You can sneak. You can kill a whole bunch of people, and it's more stealthy, and I love stealth games. Metal Gear Solid is my favorite franchise, and I love stealth games, so that's why this makes my favorite Killzone game to date. And it, it's very good, and the multiplayer is good too. I haven't tried the multiplayer for Mercenary yet, but I heard it's good. Then we come to... <clears throat> Remember Me. Now, you probably never heard of this game, or you don't remember it. <laughs> wow. But, uh, this is a very good game. It's, uh, it didn't reach the full potential, but it's very good. You should pick it up, because it's pretty cheap now. It's like $30. Definitely get this. It has a unique world, unique setting. It has a very unique game mechanic called, I believe it's called Remixing. My Remixing, where you enter somebody's memory, and you change it up. So... It changes the uh, present, but that like, but it was not. It was they needed more to the remixing, and the combat you can add like you can make up your own combos. It was pretty fun, and uh, the story is pretty good. The characters uh, not very memorable, and the dialogue is kind of corny, but everything else is great. And the soundtrack was really good too. So uh, hopefully they make a sequel to this. Then we have. DMC Devil May Cry. Yes, yes, I know, I know. A lot of people are fans of the older ones. They don't like this, but I've only played a little bit of the first one, so I can't really tell that. I know I don't have that experience of playing the first one. This game is very good, though. Right, like probably the best hack and slash game I played this year in a long, long time. The combos on this is crazy. That's probably what makes it for it. And the story is very unique because uh, you go you go into limbo. And like the the like the the demons are trying to control the world by you know propaganda and going through the uh, you know media and it's, and it's very it's very good story I think so but I can admit though I don't really like him as a character he was kind of like just boring just like 
just didn't care, but not in a good way. Like, I don't know. I just couldn't, I don't know describe it. It was just, it was alright. Who cares? But the gameplay and the story is pretty good to me. Then we have, I believe, number five, Tomb Raider. Yes, Tomb Raider. I've never played, I've played a little bit of the old ones, but this is really good. It's like Uncharted, but very, very brutal. This girl can take some, you know, some shit, right? And, uh, yeah. It's a very good game, and I like the exp exploration. It's like more than the game, uh, the gunplay. The gunplay is good. Yeah, but, like, you know how people criticize, like, oh, she's like, oh, so scared to kill people, then, like, all of a sudden, she's a killing machine. Yeah, I can, I can criticize about that, but it's just a game. You know, you have to, you have to get through it. And it's like, I love the, uh, the exploration the most, probably. And, uh, you know, building up your tools and upgrading and stuff. But this is a very good game. And, uh, number four. Got the, one of the few JRPGs coming out. It's Talazilia, the Collector's Edition. This is a very good game, too. This is the very first Tales game. Tales game. So I was surprised by how good it was. The voice acting, the story, the characters, everything was great. I know this came out in 2011, but I don't care. I love this game too much. And uh, the the best part is probably the battle system. The battle system is not turn-based, but it's action, but it's like in a controlled area. It's hard to describe. I forgot what, the, what they call it, but it's very good, though. If you like JRPGs, buy this game. And I just got rec I recently got a... Uh, Tales of Braces F for Christmas, and I can't wait to play this. I heard this has a very good battle system as well. Now, we got the top three. You probably can guess what the top three is. But, we have number three is Grand Theft Auto V. Great, great game. Great open world game. Probably the best open world game I've ever played. Second to probably, you know, the other Grand Theft Autos. Like, Rockstar know how to do open world. And, like, there's no loading times. It's, like, it, it can look, like, better than some of the other games that just have, like, linear paths. And it's amazing. There's, like, so much you can do. And, I you know, I've beaten the game, but I have, have barely scratched the surface of what you can actually do in this game. It's, like, it's, like, mind-blowing. Like, jumping out of the plane. Like, and the story was good, too. And Trevor, he's a, he's a crazy mother, I swear. Like, this dude is crazy. I've never seen somebody so crazy in a video game. And, I, you know, like, it's disturbing what they did in this game. He did in this game, but... I had to put more hours into it, and also the online. I only played a little bit online because at first it was messing up, and I, I just moved on to a different game, so... But that's a good game. Then we got the top two. We got Bioshock Infinite. Or Last of Us. Boom, boom. Number one or number two. Number two or number one. Number two goes to Bioshock Infinite. It just went came down to which one I like better. First person shooters or third person shooters. I like first third person shooters better. First person, but the first person shooters are this my second favorite from shooters. And uh... This had a probably a better story, original more original story than the Last of Us, but this is a very good game and it has deals with a lot of social issues like race and oh the best part probably is the setting of uh, Columbia, oh in the, in the sky it's like so like magnificent to look at like I was like my jaw dropped at the first scene when you go up in the air and the music is playing like wow like like did I reach heaven like it's crazy. And Elizabeth, yeah, she was cool. All the characters, the voice acting, great. I don't know if I like it better than the first of it, uh, Bioshock, but it's still great. Okay. Then we have The Last of Us. Woo! Wow. This is a very, very overhyped game, but the hype, it deserved the hype. Because this game is great. Probably the best PS3 game. And definitely the best game of the year. It drew me to tears, I believe, three times. Pretty in the beginning, the middle, and the end. Cooked me hooked the whole entire time. The characters, the story, the environments, everything. Like the gameplay. Of course, I love stealth. So you know, I'm gonna love this game. Stealth, characters, story, great graphics. Like it's perfect. I, 
The only bad thing I can say about that is you kind of break immersion when uh, Joel, I mean, Ellie's being seen by the uh, enemy, they don't react to it. That's the only thing, that's the only flaw in this game. I can't think of anything else. Like, and it ended, like, it has a definitive ending to it. And I can't wait till the DLC comes out. So, Last of Us Game of the Year Award of 2013. So, thank you for watching. Happy birthday to me. And if it's your birthday too, happy birthday. Goodbye.